All right, guys, this one's gonna be the orifice plate lab. So let's walk through this nice and slow. So all the components are here on the board. You can make use of the, uh, the pressure gauges there if you wish. Uh, most times I just get you guys to just hook up the DP cell to the orifice plate uh, because oftentimes the pressure gauges are smoked from the basic students. Um, so we may see a pressure, we may not see a pressure, we'll see once we get this up and running. Uh, if your gauges are not working, then give it to me and I'll swap it out for a new one uh, for next week. All right, so let's walk through this. We have the, the DC drive here. So we have a DC motor on the bottom here. We can see it's a DC motor because it has the placement for the brushes there and on the nameplate it says DC motor. So within this lab vault trainer, there is a DC drive in here and by sending a zero to five signal, so you can see here that the connections here for the driver zero to five and common. So by sending a zero to five volt signal there, it's gonna ramp from zero to 90 volts to the DC motor and get the pump running from zero to 100%. Now, right here, you'll notice that we have the analog outputs from the IO interface. And so we'll have the red wire going to the zero to five and we'll have the common going to common. If you screw up this connection in that if this is here and this is here, then you're not gonna get full control over the drive. And you'll call me over and you're like, I don't understand what's going on because I can't control the pump from zero to 50%. And I'll say, well, you haven't hooked it up properly. So let's do zero to five to zero to five and common to common, okay? At that point, uh, we don't have to do anything else to the, uh, the IO interface. On the second part of the lab, um, once we start in on the Venturi tube, I will show you how to hook up and send the signal back that you're seeing on the voltmeter into the computer. But for now, we have two wires going over to the pump, and those two wires are going zero to five, zero to five, and common to common. Excellent, okay? Then what we need to do is, in order to get this rock and rolling, we'll turn <coughs> excuse me, turn the pump on. And then once everything's hooked up properly, then we'll get the computer talking to the drive. Now, piping wise, we have this tube right here. This is our output from the pump. So it's coming out of this tube, coming over here, and coming into the inlet of the orifice plate. How do we know this is the inlet for the orifice plate? Well, we need a straight piece of pipe because we have a 90 here, so we need this to settle out before it smacks into the obstruction. And then we'll come from here and go over to the rotometer. The rotometer is gonna show us the actual flow that's going on. So this will be a local indicator of flow, and then we're gonna try and have the orifice plate and the DP cell provide us with that same uh, output as we're visually seeing on the rotometer. On the bottom of the rotometer, you can see that, let me just focus in here, read the float uh, from the top. So we're gonna be measuring the, the flow at the top of the float there, okay? Then from the rotometer, we're now coming back and going back to the pump. The way that we're gonna set up our valving is that hand valve two is closed. So that's our bypass valve that goes back into the tank. It's gonna be closed. We're gonna have hand valve one open to allow that water to go back into the tank. A nice clean water there. Um, there's a baffle at the bottom there that you can see to stop air bubbles from going into the pump. And hand valve three, you can just make out, is in the upwards position. And that is going to, if we take a look at this silk screen here, it's gonna allow the water to come out from the pump, out to the circuit, come back, and then through HV1, drop into the tank, and start all over again. Okay, so now we have all of our circuits set up with piping wise. Now we just need to do our smaller uh, hoses over to the DP cell. Now I have incorporated some gauges here to look at my high pressure and low pressure. So I've set it up so that um, this is my high pressure on the inlet side and low pressure on the outlet side. It's up to you whether you'd like to use those or not. Um, I had to actually swap out some gauges, this gauge here, because the first one wasn't working properly. 
So all I've done is I've come from the high side. So this is our orifice plate. The water comes in, smacks into the obstruction and slows down. The velocity goes down and the pressure goes up. So this one is going to go to the high pressure port. On the other side, based on Bernoulli's principle, this speed increases. So the velocity increases, but the flow is faster, so the pressure is lower. So this is going to go to the low pressure port of a DP cell. So looking at the lab volt trainer, the inlet side goes to the high pressure port, the outlet side goes to the low pressure port. If you want to get wet, put that tube into here. This is a check valve. This is just simply for draining out the air bubble that develops in this line. Put it into this port right here and you won't get wet. Okay. I have just come, you can just say, if I just take a step back here, I have just come from the, the orifice plate up to the gauge and then from the gauge I've gone into the DP cell. You may just want to go from the orifice plate straight into the DP cell. Okay, wiring now. We simply have to, we've already wired up the pump. For this DP cell all we have to do is just provide it with 24 volts. So there's our 24 volts right here and we're getting that 24 volts from this power supply. Okay, do me a favor, don't turn on the power until everything's set up. Uh, we're taking a voltage reading so it's a little bit better than the current because on the current you'll blow the fuse uh, if you short it out. But just common practice, just wait until everything's set up and then turn the power on. Then to look at the voltage, we're looking at the output of this thing, zero to five volts. Everything on this trainer works on zero to five. So zero to five reference here, common reference here, going into these two ports, the voltage and the common, and we're looking at a DC voltage for this lab. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to get the computer talking to the IO interface. So we're gonna start up the LV ProSim program. We're gonna come over here to process. Mm -hmm. And that didn't seem to work. So that's, I restarted the computer. So this is all right, cause I can show you from start to finish. So you're going to go in for the station. So, and the password, you're gonna enter, it'll start everything up. And then what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, LV Pro Sim. So this one's lost the, the symbol there, but the program should still be there. So let's move over to this guy, double click, and it will bring up the lab vault simulation here. Next step is to go to continue. And at this point you need to hit process work with the trainer, then where's the continue, okay, and then we've got to go to setup and enable communication, excellent, okay, no error signal whatsoever, and if I turn on the, the pump and try and control it, I should be able to, the other way you can double check is that these two LEDs are now chirping at you, telling you that the computer is now talking to the IO interface. So this box is a way that we can talk back and forth with the pump and later on with our components. Excellent. Okay, so now we're checking, making sure that we're in manual. We can now increase the output to the drive. You can hear the pump turning on behind me. And then once you've used the mouse, you can then use uh, the arrow keys. So you can see that by changing the arrow keys, I can make fine adjustments to the speed of the drive, all the way up to 100%. Okay, so now we're rocking and rolling. We've got the flow coming from the pump through the orifice plate. We've gotten rid of any of the air bubbles that are going through. It's now going up to the rotometer and we can now read the flow on the rotometer. Remember, we're looking at the top of the float to determine our flow. Keep it at this rate, so keep it high. And you can see here that if you haven't used the gauges, you can see here, this is my max flow here, even higher than what we're gonna do in the lab. And on the inlet side, I have a pressure developing of around 6.1, 6.2 PSI. That's on the inlet side of the orifice, so the higher pressure. Then you can see on the outlet side, I have a lower pressure, looks like around two PSI. So I've got 
a four PSI difference between those guys. You have to get the flow flowing properly in order to get rid of the air bubbles that are in these lines. So as soon as you connected these up, there are air bubbles in there and we need to get the air bubbles out. So let me pause this, I'll grab a longer tube and we'll bleed out those air bubbles. So to bleed them out, now we're going to put the longer hose into this check valve here. And we're just going to make sure that we have flow coming out. So that's good. Looks like we've gotten rid of air, all the air bubbles going from the orifice plate to the DP cell. That's on the high pressure side. You can see that you need to have a decent uh, pressure going into that port in order to push that flow out. Okay, these are check valves, so as soon as I let her go, then I don't get wet. And now I'm gonna bleed out the low pressure side, and I'm just seeing that I've got flow there. So you can physically, you can see the air bubbles coming through. Now that I have sustained flow there, I know that I've got water right to the sensing element, and now I know that the pressure that's developed at the uh, sensor is the exact same as the pressure that's at the orifice plate. Okay, if you don't do that, then the air bubble that's in here, as this pressure increases, all you're gonna be doing is compressing and decompressing the air bubble, and that, val that pressure is not gonna go straight to the sensing element. So, we bled it out, now we've got the pressure going right to the DP cell, and we're going to now reduce the flow. So, I'm using the arrow keys here, and I'm reducing the flow down to two liters per minute. So just small finite adjustments. Okay, beauty, so now I'm at two liters per minute and now we're gonna look at the voltage. So the voltage is set up, I've already calibrated this. So I'm now adjusting, let me go back to the DP cell, sorry for the camera work here. So I'm now adjusting the zero potentiometer here for the low end and I'm just going to reduce the, the voltage down and I'll slowly bring it back up. See how it jumps there? So there's a wide range in the bottom end where you'll see like no voltage whatsoever. So bring it up until you see the meter bump like this and then back it off. And now we're having our lowest voltage or zero volts corresponding to our lowest flow. Lowest flow reading from the top of the, the float there at two liters per minute. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to increase the flow up to nine liters per minute. Again, using the arrow keys, we can slowly bring it in, trying to look straight on to see that value right there, nine liters, and let's just see whether it's actually nine liters. Hard to see with these. So maybe it looks like it's a little bit low, and it's gonna jump around a touch. Okay, you gotta look at it straight on. So that looks like nine liters at the top of the float there. This is a variable area flow meter in that the, the rotometer is set so that at low flows you have a small area, at higher flows you have a larger area. And this one is set up uh, for a specific gravity of one. So it's set up for water. Different rotometers are set up for different specific gravities, meaning different liquids and different gases. Excellent, okay. So now I'm not getting the five volts. So I'm going to now adjust the span potentiometer. And with this lab, they'd like to keep the low pass filter off. So the span potentiometer, and I'd like to see, I'm gonna reduce the range or reduce the span until I see five volts. Now again, because of the nature of the flow, it's gonna be bouncing around a touch. Come on. Try and get it as close as you can. Okay, so again, because the float is physically moving around, then we know that the pressure is changing a touch, but that's probably as close as we're gonna get to five volts. Excellent, so now we've set the zero and we've set the span, um, and now we should get a the voltage coming off of this DP cell matching with the flow. Now, I'm not gonna, have you guys watch paint dry here, but what you really need to do is um, you need to set up the zero in the span two more times. Every time you adjust the zero, it affects the span. Every time you adjust the span, it affects the zero. Do it
Do it three times, so do this calibration at two liters per minute and adjust this for zero volts. Nine liters per minute and adjust this for five volts. Do it three times. Then you'll be as accurate as possible. Okay, so now you've calibrated everything. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take readings from two and then, so we're gonna look at uh, two liters per minute, then three liters per minute, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine liters per minute. And we should see a corresponding voltage between zero to five volts. So let's take a look. Obviously we've set this for two liters per minute to give us the lowest voltage. So we've got 0 0.003 uh, volts. And let me see if I can reach over here and increase the, the pump, sorry. So now I'm gonna go up to three liters per minute. Bring her back down so it's proper. Okay, three liters per minute, I'm only getting 0.185 volts. Four liters per minute. 0 0.55, 0 0.56 volts. Sorry, taking a while to get five here. Here's five. 1.16, so you can see that this is not a linear relationship between the flow at the orifice and the actual voltage that's coming out. This is an exponential increase in voltage. As we get more flow, we get more pressure difference between the low and the high pressure port. Now we're up to 1.83 for six liters per minute. There's seven liters per minute, 2.8. Now we're eight liters per minute. We're only going up to nine liters per minute. Look at that, just jumped up to 3.8. And here at nine liters per minute. Come on, buddy. There's our five volts. We're as close as we can get her there. Okay, so you can see that that's a, an exponential increase. So as you get more flow at low flows, so this, this orifice plate would be awful for low flows because at this point at low flows, we're getting very minimal difference between these two pressure ports. As the flow increases, then we get a higher pressure develop here, a lower pressure develop here, but it's an exponential increase. So if we were to graph this out, our voltage is gonna look like this. Okay, we wanna have a linear relationship, but we're not getting that from this sensor. If we take a look again, let me drop her down to two liters, just so we can see the, the pressure difference between these guys. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, there's two liters per minute. I mean, there's very, I mean, we have 0 0.002 volts on the meter, no difference in pressure on either of the gauges. There's one liter, still nothing. So you can see minimal difference Okay, so that was three, this is four, still minimal difference. The gauges are a lot less accurate than this DP cell. The DP cell is already giving me that voltage. These guys have been moved. Okay, so we're below uh, one PSI. Now you can see the pressure increasing on the high pressure side. That's six liters per minute. There's seven liters per minute, eight, the high pressure is increasing, the low pressure has not even moved. Nine liters per minute, we're slowly getting pressure on the low pressure port now. And I have to actually go up to 10 liters per minute, the max, in order to get uh, a pressure on the low pressure side to come in on this gauge. Okay, so the gauges are showing us a high pressure port on the inlet, a low pressure port on the outlet, but a lot less accurate than this differential pressure cell. Excellent, so now you can graph that out and it's gonna give you uh, an exponential curve. Because we saw that the voltage slowly increased and then all of a sudden started rocking up. So by graphing that out, again, you're gonna have that exponential curve on the first graph. You're gonna take those voltage values that you got on the graph, on that first column. And I want you to take the square root. And that's gonna, when you graph that out again, it'll give you a nice linear relationship between the voltage or the square root voltage 
and the actual float. So what one of these transmitters is going to have to do is it's going to have to take the square root of whatever voltage is developed and then push it out. Because we can see that the initial pressure difference and voltage that comes out of the DP cell is an exponential curve. If we want to have a linear relationship, then part of the transmitter is going to have to take the square root of those voltages. So the next, I'll stop the, uh, the video here. The next part, part B for this orifice plate lab, is uh, we're just going to add a few new wires in and we'll send that voltage that we see on the voltmeter over to the computer and we'll have the computer take the square root so that we can get that linear relationship.